the Duke, the Duke folk. He is growing amb overly, maybe overly, but quite ambitious and powerful here within the lands of the Kingdom of France. Of course, last episode, being part of a uh, crusade that put his niece in as the Queen of Pomerania, and then he was bestowed upon by the Pope a claim on the lands of Champagne. Champagne currently dealing with an internal revolt uh, led by the Prince Bishop Flavio of Chalon. And yes, Folk is looking at possibly coming in, swooping in, and taking Champagne for himself together with his allies. So if we look at the allies here, um, the Duke of Auvergne is obviously the most powerful one to add troops. Macon and uh, Montargis will also add a good contingent. Trois, not so much because they're, uh, you know, a vassal. So that, that would drop away. Not going to worry about the Baroness from Poland. So that's a 900 less, but still more than powerful enough and have significantly more money in the bank. Um, could add some more troops. I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, we're going to go for the duchy, declare war, raise our armies, and we will, of course, call in our allies. The duchess, she will not accept. Okay. Uh, he will accept, of course, and he will not accept, of course, either. You know what? Let's let's call in the the Baroness from Poland as we build up our forces here in the south, and then head up north as our allies start forming up. Excellent news! Perfect. And now we can start marching our troops north into Chartres first and take that. Here comes the enemy's forces. Uh, pretty strong force, in fact. It cuts right past us. Interesting. We'll go in here and start that siege. And a large force from Auvergne is coming up. So that's 1,900 strong. We've got a new Marshall perk to unlock. Hit and run, of course. We'll do that. And keep an eye on that with certainty. I took Folk out playing with a bow, and to my surprise, he ran into a wounded doe. Did not hesitate in the slightest to bring it down. Greatness awaits you, Folk. And he keeps the ambitious trait. Okay, so we can see... Our allies down here, the Duke of Auvergne, is chasing the Duke and harrying the army. And now they have engaged down here. The Battle of Valence in the forest to defeat his forces of Champagne. Perfect. I mean, that couldn't have played any better as he had turned around and has harried his forces enough that he can now go in. And I'm assuming they're going to lay siege here now and and we're yes and up north here we've got six months left in, on the siege of Chartres and then we can go for the heartlands of of Champagne mainly uh, to Reims itself Emma God comes of age I am proud to see my daughter no longer as a child but as an adult always a clever child Emma God proved time and time again over the course of her studies that she had a natural affinity for careful planning and more than a little misdirection. She now knows a lot of ways to get what she wants. Most importantly, she is highly aware of the political implications of those wants. They grow up fast. She's an intricate web weaver. Duke Baudouin and Emengarde d'Anjou are now married. Ooh, that's a... That's a large force there. King Henri has now become new liege after King Philippe has passed. Uh, but those are the rebel forces. 
That's what that is. Okay. So that's that's a that's the internal war right now that he is fighting and losing. Let's see, he is allied to the King of France. Oh boy. That could be dangerous. Council of my vassal, as an influential Luke, is only fair that you have a voice on my council. Marshal of France. Ha, we've actually got better relationships now with um King Henri II of France, significantly better. Don't like the fact that he's allied with Champagne. Not in the slightest. Power sharing. Declare me regent. Hmm. Interesting. Siege is one in Chartres. Faction created against King Henri. Count Eudes. Okay, so there's going to be some internal stuff happening there. High Crown Authority has been passed. And now, Culture has discovered battlements. Finally! Okay, so there's a battle to the north. Whoop. Didn't mean to click on that. How's... What's going on here? Where are, where are allies over here? So they're moving all around over there. So I think now we can move our troops. We move them in? Yeah, let's let's start moving over there. Greetings to town. I've prowled through the doc through the documents, both ancient and of less certain provenance, and we have uh, can even argue a rightful lord of the Dutch. Oh, so we have a claim on the county of Poitiers, but he could even argue that we have a right to the Duchy of Poitiers. All of Poitiers will be my count. One hundred and forty gold. So we have an unpressed claim against the Duchy of Poitiers. Uh, we definitely had the money to do it. Rhineländer hybridization. Spurred on by, the, by positive relations and increased cultural exchange, the Franconian and French peoples have grown increasingly close over the years. Now individuals from these societies have begun to view themselves not as one of the, or the other, but as both simultaneously. A new Rhineländer, people from the Rhine, culture. Franconian traditions and values form the backbone of this new culture, while various French attributes have been adapted and integrated to meet the needs of their new society. Whether out of skillful manipulation or genuine desire to lead his people into a new era, King Ustache, King of Leuteringa, has positioned himself as the leader of this cultural awakening. Hmm. Interesting. Within the Holy Roman Empire. Oh, so we lost a council member. The sermon. Today, Ubald held a fiery sermon for all of the children of the court. They were apparently spellbound as he zealously read from the scriptures. My ward, Gildwin, now seems certain that he is destined for greatness, claiming that God supports his him indiscriminately. That's right. Never forget that the divine is on your side. Okay. So we are beginning our siege here. Getting ahead. Both Count Baudouin of Auvergne and I are held in esteem by our liege Count Henri. However, when it comes to handing out titles, honor, and wealth, one of us will always be first among equals. The upcoming gathering at Paris Castle gives me a chance to ensure that I am one with the king's favor. As a smooth talker, this should be easy. So it's 50-50, which way this goes. I will illustrate that God already favors me. 100% that that will not work. We vassals should work together, not against each other, befriending fellow vassals for five years. Yeah, I think... And he's married to our daughter. I think we should work together. Our allies are kind of running around down there. Enemy ally joins war. Duke Edis. So we will see what happens here. As... Oop, that's not what I wanted. Stay there. <laughs> the Duke here, he is only in war with us. He's allied to Sigismund of Troyes. So he's no longer allied to the King of France. That is good. So, and yeah, things are 
going well for us as our allies start besieging here as well and slowly but surely I don't see any threat from anywhere else we're gonna start eating up champagne we do need a new steward Guillaume de Mont oh he would be really good do we have any strong ones here Guy de Mont yes Guillaume de Mont sorry uh, see, we've got an 1100 st strong army from Champagne moving south. Faction targeting you has disbanded. Child returned. So he is heading way south here into our lands. We're going to have 42 days here. He's got three months left at Chateau Thierry, place that I actually visited last fall. Very, very nice area. Isodun is under siege. Okay, but I'm not going to break off this siege just yet. See where we are in power. War score after this. We are at 56%. Okay, now we're going to take this army. And we are going to move it south. And take on the forces of Champagne. The good thing is we can go to Sancerre after that. Besiege that fort. They have higher quality troops, but we have better army commander, commander traits, more soldiers, more men at arms. And we've got our allies coming in as well. I mean, we will, this will, this will hopefully be a very decisive one. And the Duke, both Dukes are facing off in this crucial battle. Victory is ours. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually move here. And if we get Sancerre, that should be enough then for us to win the war. I don't think he's got enough troops to reclaim those lands up north. Let's see, how long is that going to take? Uh, seven months. We're at five months. It's going to be a little bit of a race here. But we should win out. Duke Guillaume the Fifth might join the Barium claim on the Duchy of Champagne as an enemy. Okay, Nice has been imprisoned. Not too worried about that. We've got a month left here. Levy leaves farmland empty, unused farmland for five years. Ooh, that's not good. But we'll be fine. We will be fine here. Just a few more days. Hopefully that will do it. Duke Guillaume has joined the war. Ah, that's not enough. Okay, we need to move up north now. We need to act against them. We need to act swiftly. Uh, before, see, here's a large army moving up from the south. Education at end. My ward, Fulk, has come of age. In his time, he left my care. Despite always seeming to seek authority and order, Fulk has not become as proficient as expected in the administration of lands and people. Few would be impressed by his understanding of the subject, but he has at least developed a sound grasp on the basics of management and the beginnings of a sensible frugality. He's a thrift clerk. Okay, they broke off the siege. Can we catch them in time for a decisive battle once again against the Duke before that large army from the south arrives? If we can beat him and capture him, that'll do it. Victory in the field. And there it is. There it is. We can enforce our demands. So be it. And disband all. And with that, Duke Folk. Now, I mean, it's all the county of Barry. But he now controls all of Champagne, Barry, and Anjou lands. And next, has his sights set on Poitiers. No doubt there whatsoever. We take a look at Poitiers. They're allied with Count of Bian. I mean, they are vastly inferior. Duchess Ava has no chance. No chance whatsoever. So let's take a look here. We can, we can declare a war on the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, and King Robert of England. Thibault has claims. Yeah, no, we're not going to go to war with England. But Duchess Ava, for sure. 
Uh, could would grant a claim on Duchy of Provence. We don't need to do that. We have a lot of people looking for council positions. If we look at grants on folk, can marry. So let's see if we can find someone for folk. Just a little side note. Could get him the city of Warendorf. Warendorf, uh, it's actually close to where I'm from. Uh, actually, we, my family is from the Kreis Warendorf, the county of Warendorf in Germany. Just, just a fun little side note there. Nothing too much of importance. I may have find one, found one. She's a little bit older than him. Margarita de Limoges. She's 22, but she is lustful, which obviously helps with fertility quite a bit. She's arrogant, she's fickle, but she has claims on the county of Limousin. She's pretty good marshal. Um, just decent and in intrigue. I mean, let's be honest, uh, Folk is not, not that amazing. We have a Hohenstaufen here, which is kind of just an interesting little intermarriage. Other than that, there's not a ton here. I mean, we've got Sophie Olaf's daughter, who is Danish, but really nothing overly interesting there. We've got some here that could be claims in the north. Magdal, but she's relatively unimpressive. I mean, let's be honest, they're pretty, they'd be an unimpressive couple in general, but he is the only child of Geoffrey d'Anjou, so he is the future heir apparent. Um, so finding someone who at least somewhat is good is of a benefit. And honestly, this is the one that I see as most beneficial. Also for producing an heir. We could do a grand wedding, but I'm not going to do that. That's too much money right now. So we'll go into that direction right now. Potential allies. Uh, nope, he still doesn't like it. And neither does she. Let's see. She is a drunkard. But a crusader queen. So excellent. That is taken care of. Faction created against us. By who? Count Udes of Provence. Of Provence. Okay. He has quite a few. He has a lot of, lot of claims, mainly the Duchy of Champagne. So we can either put him on our council. He would make an excellent marshal. He would make an absolutely fantastic marshal. So let's take a look at our council real quick and see if there's anybody here that we may want to change. So yes, we will assign him as our, yes, sorry, Joffrey, Count Udes is more important. We're going to try to sway him as well to be on our side. So get someone very, an important vassal on the council. Who else? Bishop Flavio. Whoa, that's, that's quite impressive. Unfortunately... I cannot do revocable title there. Steward, nope. Guillaume is just more powerful. I could try to sway him. I wonder if I could revoke his title. Or what if I murder him? Nah, eh, probably not a good look. Manassas of Sens. He's just not really good at anything, to be perfectly honest. Udes is definitely he's definitely the one I was most concerned about, just because we're gonna control in Reims, Reims, because he has a claim on the duchy itself. So now it is November of eleven o two, first of November. We look at Pomerania and the liege here. I wonder if we start a scheme to murder her. Scheme is a 5% chance. We've already tried that once. Um, I honestly don't really want 
this here. I don't, there's no interest in Pomerania. It would talk about a side quest for those of you who play Dungeons and Dragons or any other tabletop role playing game. By the way, don't forget to check out the videos here on the channel talking about role playing games, as more will come here again in future. Just have a lot going on. I'm gonna continue, it's a total sidestep here, continue on uh, with my how to play uh, Simber Room, which is an absolutely fantastic game. Got two videos out already about, in general, how to play it and then the setting. So, anyway. I have no interest in Pomerania. This is where the interest is. Speaking of which, so there is a Liberty War for Duke from Duke Wolfmare of Northumbria. Hmm. He's allied with Prince Richard of England. There is Prince Richard of England, who has the Duchy of Notmark and Queen Emily is the liege. Uh, that's a direction to go. I would very much like to marry into this family. Let's see, what do we have here? What do we still have? He is unmarried. Julien d'Anjou currently has no spouse. So let's do a little spouse hunting. So here is some, they are related and there is a risk of being inbred. Where is the relation? Where neighboring ruler? Trying to find. I'm probably completely blind, but mother of Queen King Henry the uh, Second. Anyway, getting too deep here. Why will he not accept it? Tilda Nomini is marrying down. That's a minus forty. King Robert desires an alliance plus one. You have too many existing alliances. Uh, King Robert's opinion of Julien d'Anjou is minus, and minus 19 of us. Level of splendor of the d'Anjou dynasty is plus 5. Intimidated by you. Matilda de Normandy is dear to King Robert. There's just a lot running against it. Mainly as we have too many alliances. And she's marrying down. That is unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed. Now the one thing I am seeing here... So we can declare war. We can request claim. We can offer to join the war. A defender of your faith in a holy war. Um, let's see. So it looks like because we once worked together, offer to come to aid of an ally, your liege, defender of your faith in a holy war, or help of Asimov. So, yeah, that's an interesting one here that there would be an alliance, I mean, that we could jump into that war. There's no reason for it. But, uh, yeah, there, there theoretically could be, there could be something here. We have Conan. We arrange a marriage with him. Nah, we don't really have anybody of relevance that we could do anything with. The only one unmarried is Julien d'Anjou, where he's not even betrothed at this point. Um, Folk is, that's the only one out of that marriage. So, oof, that's, that's a little, a little on the rough side there. Love to get into there. What about the House of Flanders? Oh, you are a child. You are a child. Okay, so nothing there. What about the King of France? Princess Agathy. She's, I mean, she's four. I don't know if there's much we can do here. Oh. Um, so. We could marry into the house Capi. He's 11, she's 4. That's, that's a little... That's a little much. And that really doesn't get me where I want to be. I want to get an Anjou together with the House of Normandy. That's really what I'm looking at. Queen Constance of Scotland, Prince Richard. Does he have any, I mean, his children are all older. Jordan and William. Are there any of these running around? Yeah, they're all, they're all married at this point. 
Yeah, unfortunately, there's nothing doing right now. Marrying into the French house might not be a bad play, to be perfectly honest. That could be an interesting direction to go, but it doesn't really help. I mean, it would be amazing to create a, an Angevin dice. Let me get this down to one and keep running while I'm talking. Might as well progress the game a little bit. So we're in a time of peace and, and figuring things out here. Eventually, the Angevin dynasty was looking at controlling all of France. Um, of course, Henry VI was technically king of England and king of France. Now, they were not really Angevin. Um, I mean, that comes from Henry V and, and his father, who, of course, uh, Henry IV, he say, usurped the throne. And that led to that little intermezzo before the Wars of the Roses. Um, so, I mean, there was that brief time period where you were technically had a dual crown on one head, but Henry VI never really did anything, of course. He was not a good king of England, to say the least. We've got a new martial perk. We're going to go with sappers. So that helps our siege progression. We'll unlock that. I think what we're going to also look at doing now is faction created Count Manassas of Saint on the Champagne throne against you. Faction there. Aha. That count has just been an absolute pain. We can try to have him killed. I'd like to start higher than 14%. If I'm perfectly honest, I'd like to start higher than that. We'll take a look at the factions here. So if we look at this, so right now we've got a faction install count. It is of uh, Provence on the Champagne throne. At 3%, it's discontent, it's going down. So now it's at 0%, too weak to send an ultim ultimatum. He's the only member. And of this faction, uh, he's the only member. Uh, too weak to send an ultimatum. Right now, military power at 91%. I don't like this guy. What if I revoke his title of the County of Sens? So, I mean, yeah, this would... Yeah, no, we don't need to completely destabilize the duchy on that account. I think, you know what? We will start a scheme to murder him. I I want him gone. There's there's no no other way to put that. I want him gone. So we've got disrupt schemes from Batelemy. On that count, Udis, we're still working on him. And now, do we continue putting in claims? La Marche would be next to keep an eye on. Bastion curtain walls have been constructed in Mondome. Perfect. Let's actually look at where things sit right now in terms of development. So we can't upgrade because we're missing the money. Okay don't necessarily want to completely bankrupt us at this point. But, uh, you know, it's there. We got two years left until the city is built. What else can we do here? Increase our crop fields. Holding taxes go up. Reduce costs for hosting a feast. Or we could go walls and towers. Bump those up. This county supply limit plus 300. Station heavy cavalry gets a bonus. Danger goes down fort level plus two. Yeah, I think we're going to go with walls and towers. Upgrade here to a bailey. Uh, just to improve the defenses in our home. And then here we have the earth ramparts. Uh, what else can we construct? An outpost. Series of outposts. Skirt all significant settlements in this province, providing an early warning system in case of raised animal attacks. Hunting siding goes up. Um, let's see what else. Taxes go up. We can do forestry. Hunt success chance goes up. We can do hunting grounds. We don't really have... Do we have hunting grounds anywhere in our holdings? 
Uh, Van Dom doesn't. Angers doesn't. And, whoop, we don't. Uh, let's see here. No hunting grounds. We need hunting grounds, for sure. Okay. Lines about legacy. The latest work of my acquaintance, Mayor Julien, has become all the rage at court of late. The piece deals with memory and what we leave behind, and Julien is publicly dedicated it to me. When legacy takes shape, the mightiest men must leave this earth, their deeds, their acts, their swollen worth, and when their final hour nears, wonder will life echo through the years. So far, I've kept my thoughts to myself, but the buzz has grown too dramatic to ignore for much longer. I don't know quite how I feel about this. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Julianne, I can see this is truly heartfelt. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we gained the opinion. So we're going to go to Blois. And we are going to have some hunting grounds. We need hunting grounds in our realm, without a doubt. And we're going to go to the military. Now, we cannot create more men-at-arms. But, regiments, but we can add more here. So we cannot create another regiment. We can increase our pikemen, our light footmen. Add another siege. So siege progress. So yes, we're gonna add another one of those. And pikemen, let's raise our, get more skirmishers up. Light footmen as well. Okay, so that's whittled down our finances enough, I think right now. Uh, what else can we claim here? Provence still, Pisa, Venice. Those are all a little bit odd. Uh, and, of course, Poitiers. Prince Gelduin of France. What can we get here? Manassas' claims. Yeah, no, we're not going to do any of these. Count Simon of Valois. On behalf of people. We're not going to do that just yet. The, the next likely target is Poitiers. Take a look at Poitiers right now. They are allied small ally overall they would field a thousand if we grab Poitiers and extend this entire southern border that's probably the best bet that we could do at this point we're generating a lot of income I'm gonna get more faction targeting you has disbanded twist of fate as I make all the preparations wait wait let me see which one has disbanded uh, Count Manassas ascends to the Champagne throne. Okay. Faction created against you. Gervais is created. Liberty faction. Okay, keep an eye on that. So I make all the preparations necessary for Count Manassas' departure from this world. I am interrupted by a page. The spawn of hell went and died without any help from me. Satan must have been eager for his company. Well, that's easy enough. So now let's look at these factions. A Liberty faction... One member, Rettel, Count Gervais. Not overly concerned here right now. Julien de Jean has returned. And I think it might be time to head south. Poitiers faction carried against you. Count Guirin of Sens. He doesn't like me. And I could keep going down that that rabbit hole of those, but not overly concerned. Liberty War. My Liege's War. That's a Liberty War. Why is... Oh, because the King of France is part of it. That's why. That's what I was missing. Look how fractured France is. I mean, France itself, the actual crown holdings... I mean, it's a barony, it's the county of Vermandois, county of Clermont, and the county of Ile-de-France. The Capetian holdings are super small. I mean, it is so fractured right all the way through here. I mean, it could just go in and start gobbling up all of this bit by bit by bit. Um, but I don't really want to go there. I think Poitiers... Poitiers is the play right now. Head south in the traditional lands of the Angevin. And that's what we're going to be doing now. So it's time to declare war. We'll raise our armies. 
and head on south. Call our allies the great Duke of Auvergne. I mean, we've got so much prestige. Robert, call him. Vemond will not accept because she doesn't really care for me as much. Um, and I'm not going to worry about them. And we're going to raise our forces and then head south. Going to go straight for Poitiers. That's where we're going to go. Count Ferrand has joined. I'm not worried about him. Greetings, brother. So they are moving into Poitiers itself. And we're just going to move straight in for the kill, so to speak. Can we catch them before they leave? No questions of punishment. My ward prince, Gedouin, came to me complaining about Julien <laughs> bullying him. He started asking how to get someone hanged if he felt like they should be. Your will is the only law that truly matters. Now, well, you're arbitrary just like me. All right, can we capture them before they leave? No. I do like destroying an army, but we will leave that to our allies right now. It's going to take four months, and up there comes uh, Auvergne. See, they're heading up north. Leave him, leave the Poitiers army to our allies to deal with. He's just kind of running around. Impeccable household, you gain 150 more prestige. Oh, they're not attacking them. To the impressive folk, I have been corresponding with your chancellor, Mayor Giraud. And I must say that I have come to see you in a new light. Perhaps you are even someone that I can one day would be... Pr can... Oh, gosh. That one day would I... Oh, my Lord. We can be friends. Who are you? Count Conrad of Luxembourg? Book? Sure. Child of my dynasty. My daughter-in-law, Gertrude, has given birth to a son. Since the little one is part of Danjou dynasty, he could be blessed with a good name. Hmm, let's see. An ancestor. Kim Joffrey, son of Joffrey. Hugh Joffrey. Yeah, another Joffrey. We love our Joffreys and folks um, in the house of Anjou. So, Barry is under siege, though I'm not really worried about that, to be perfectly honest. Got to break that off pretty quickly. And we will be gaining Poitiers here in just a few days. So the siege is won. All right, where do we want to head off next? Do I want to just crush them? I really, really do. Okay, I want to catch them in battle. Do we get there in time? We do. Ah, and the Duchess is actually part of the contingent of the army. Did we capture her by chance? We did not. Okay, so now we're going to move in back here. Maybe destroy their allies in combat. Will we catch them in time? Yes, we do. Destroy their ally. And then start moving through the lands. 95%. Uh, let's take... What do we want to take? Yeah, let's head south to Lusignan. I think that's the right play. Get that one. It'll take a few months. And then Poitiers will belong to House d'Anjou. You can see our allies are breaking off to kind of go after the tiny Poitiers army. If they crush them, that might be enough to do it as well. And we can head over here. Battle of Molevrier. Victory there that didn't do it. That just wasn't enough, but I'm not overly concerned there. And it looks like the Liberty War here of Northumbria is not going very well in England either, as Anjou becomes more and more powerful. The clock is ticking on the Duchy of Poitiers. One day left, and there it is. Lusignan is ours, as is the Duchy of Poitiers. We may disband now, and with that, the Duchy of Berry, Udashak is no longer the court physician, so we need to find a new court physician. We can create the Duchy of Orléans. Interesting, interesting. 
potentially negotiate an alliance with Queen Amelie. That's not gotten any better. We've got plenty we can ransom here. Count Ferran. And uh, who else do we have? Ferran of Bern. Ransom him. And we can create the Duchy of Orléans. We have the money. We could do it. Ransom accepted. Countess Eva. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely going to be dealing with uh, some major, major uh, factions here for independence against us. Uh, let's see here. We need to... Count Udes is still... Still working on Reims. Lusignan, Chartres. Still, still working on that. Still working on that. But we have grown quite large. Do we want to create another duchy title? We are the, the Duke of Berry. We have the Duchy of Champagne. And the Duchy of Poitiers. If <laughs> we can create the Duchy of Orléans. So many ducal titles at this point. It's more or less all going to Joffrey, even though one of the duchies could end up going to Julien. Now, what we could, of course, do, Julien is scarred, he's bossy, he's greedy, he's fickle, he's diligent. We could force him to take the cloth. Now, this is something that, for instance, Henry II did with his son Joffrey, uh, one of his sons. I mean, he obviously, Richard was in there, uh, John, famously. But one of his sons, Joffrey, uh, was forced to take the cloth and to not, to, to basically also help against splitting the realm. Whereas Joffrey d'Anjou has Fulk and Joffrey. He already has two. So it might not be bad to force him to take vows. Uh, personality destined for greater things. That goes against it. He's bossy, in line of succession. So he's not going to do that. Yeah, I mean, mainly destined for greater things is is the, the key thing here. Uh, that's, that's, that's what it is. Okay, so, well, we tried. <laughs> we tried looking at that. I think this is a good place to end to today, today's episode or this episode. You may be binge watching for all I know. I keep saying on today's episode, and you may be watching five of them in a row for all I know. Um, but that is the end of this episode as Fulk, at the ripe old age of 61, is, he's in poor health now. He's starting to ail. He's looking at the future. There's a very good chance some of these lands are going to split. Now, if it if I had my choice for the Angevin aspect of this, I would of course want, you know, Barry basically Anjou and all that, and Poitiers to stay with Geoffrey. Geoffrey. And then Julien would take Champagne. Uh, because the lands of the Angevin were basically this western France, this western half of France. So keeping an eye south towards Aquitaine, Gascogne, Limousin, La Marche, and so on. That's that's Armagnac. That's really the area we need to be expanding into. I, Champagne is great. Uh, it obviously adds a good amount of revenue. But that's not really where the interest is. The interest is somewhere else. Uh, what do we have here? Kind of, kind of want that there as well. But uh, how we get in with the King of England—that's the main thing. He's she's betrothed. So the twelve-year-old Princess Matilda is betrothed to Duke Hugh, the Hunchback of East Anglia, who's seventy-four years old. That's gross, man. That's gross. All right. So as I said. Please hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts on Folk One-Eyed and how he's been doing in the growth since uh, he took over the House d'Anjou. Maybe one day he will actually be the head of the house 
and not Amelie, the queen of Pomerania. All the twists and turns that only Crusader Kings 3 can provide. So again, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.